Welcome. This is an abridged version of a FGCon tutorial session I ran on doing extension coding for Fantasy Grounds. In this uh, demonstration, we're going to code a fairly simple extension. We're going to extend, uh, add some extra fields on the character sheet, and then add some extra functionality through some uh, scripting commands. So, what we've got here is a fresh, brand new 5e rule set and we've got uh, an, a demo extension created. Now when I say we've got this demo extension created, all we've got so far is this base file called extension.xml. So we'll have a quick peek at that. So if we're here in the Fantasy Grounds data folder, extensions, fgcon demo, and then we've got extension.xml. Your extension needs to either be in an ext file in the extensions folder, or it needs to be in a folder in the extensions folder. Now the only required content of your extension is a file called extension.xml. It's possible to create your entire extension, providing there's no graphics, inside the extension.xml file. You don't need anything else. Everything could be done within that. But typically we don't do it that way. What we try and do is do it, keep the same structure and layout as Moon Wizard has done for the core RPG rule sets. So we'll create a similar folder structure for the elements that we need to create folders for. So let's go and have a look at our extension.xml to start with. You can see here each uh, tag following proper XML formatting uh, has an open and a closing tag. So we've got properties here and it closes here. We've got description here and it closes there. We've got an announcement here and it closes because on one line with a, a close tag. Uh, we've got a base tag here and a closing tag at the bottom. Now if we go through this we can see we've got the extension name, got the author, the description. Uh, this tag here is a little bit more in complex. This specifies the functionality level from the core engine of Fantasy Grounds. This should probably be updated to a newer version but 3 is fine for the scope of what we're doing today. And we can see here that we've got an announcement. This is going to be displayed in the chat when the extension loads. Some text, 5e demo extension. Got some uh, carriage returns here. More great resources. We've got a URL here. And we've specified a font called chat font. Now chat font is a font that's defined in Core RPG. We've got a font here called icon. And sorry, hey, not that we've got an icon here called Die Hard. Now, Die Hard is defined down here. We've got this is a type icon. The name is Die Hard, and it points to graphics logos. Die Gaming, small dot png. Now, if we have a look at our folder here, we don't have that. So we're going to create those folders. Graphics, and inside graphics. We're going to create another folder called Logos. And inside that folder, we're going to drag or copy our logo file. There we go. We've got uh, the file is here. Um, let's look preview in a sec. So it's in graphics, logos. And that's the file path that's specified here. So let's save that. Let's load up our campaign. Go into here. So we've got this campaign called 5e demo. We've got the 5e demo extension. Let's start that up. First thing that we'll see is we've got three announcements here in the chat window. We've got one from Core RPG one from the 5e rule set which is layered on core and then we have our extension which is in effect layered on top of each of these and we've got the text from our announcement 5e demo extension more great resources app and this is a feature in 3.3.5 which is due out any day now uh, where it replaces that HTML link with uh, the shield or icon button that is used elsewhere within this rule set if I click on there it'll open that website that's the extent of this extension. That's all it does. It's got an announcement and it displays that logo. So what we really want to do is look at what we're actually going to create in this extension. Before we do that, I'm going to show you a couple of little things that I do to 
clear up the or to speed up my development process when I'm coding a rule set. I type slash reload, copy it down here into the F1 key. I type do the same for slash console into the F2 key and slash save into the F3 key. Now, what we're actually going to do here for our rule set is we're going to extend the character sheet. We're going to add a couple of extra fields to it. All right, we've got a couple of characters I created um, when I was running through this extension at the first time. Let's create a new character. Let's give him a icon. All right. This is a token from uh, City of Mist. That's Salamander. We'll go with him anyway. That, that, that's fine for me. And what we're going to do is, on the Notes tab, we want to add a couple of extra fields. So we're playing a game that's um, where we have a clan, and we have a liege, and we have the potential to um, be granted a title within the clan, such as war leader, counselor, or shaman. So I want it to appear, I want that information to appear here on the notes tab. Now, the easiest way to find the right file to edit to add these fields in is to look for something on this existing page that's relatively unique and this word personality is not going to appear too many times in the 5e rule set so I'm going to use my notepad plus plus and I'm going to use the find in files feature and I'm going to search for the word personality and I'm going to do it in an search an unpacked copy of the 5e rule set that I've stored here in the rule sets folder. So let's find all instances of the word personality. You might see that uh, my code editor of choice is Notepad++. It's a nice, simple, free uh, editor. Um, I think it's great, it works really well for, for my level of coding. Uh, use whatever tool you, you like to use. If you haven't got a tool already, I suggest you, you look at Notepad++, nice simple tool. Now, we've, the word personality shows up twice in the rule set. We can see here there's a string, and it's got an, it, that we've got a string car background, and it's called personality traits. And we've also got here a string name uh, where we define the value of this personality traits as personality traits here in caps. So if we have a look at this file, we're going to find that this is a strings file in the 5e rule set. It's got a whole bunch of strings. So why do we use strings rather than just doing a static text uh, res? That's so that if somebody wants to translate this into French, they can just replace all these words in a, in a replacement file for this, all these words with French ones, and it'll go a long way to internationalizing that. Do it with German, do it with any um, language that has a supported language set, which is pretty limited in the current version of Fantasy Grounds. We'll get improved. So the other file is record car notes. We open that up and we can see here our string car background, which is a template. It's got a name personality traits and that's what's causing those words personality traits to display on our character sheet so we're in the right spot we're on the right file now what we're going to find is the easiest way to actually <clears throat> add some extra content or extra fields to the rule set or to our extension is to copy this file in its entirety into our extension and add the extra fields. Easy. We can do that. The problem with doing that is that if the rule set, the 5e rule set is updated and some changes are made to this file in the 5e rule set, we won't see them because we've replaced that file completely. So what we want to do is merge our changes into the current version. So we're going to have a look at this file, we've got root, we've got a window class and for notes, and a window class for notes contents. Alright, what we need to do is over here, let's create a new folder. 
called campaign. Campaign is where all that character sheet and NPC sheet data is stored. And we're going to save this current file here. File save as. We're going to put it in. Hopefully that's done it where we want to. Great, record car notes is there. Now, we don't need all this information. We can get rid of this. Window class name, car sheet notes, we don't need any of that. But we do want to merge our content in with this section. So we're going with merge equals join. Okay, and anything there that we do is, is then going to merge in with that. We don't need to change the margins, we can remove that. We don't need to adjust the column anchor, we can remove that. What we do want to do though is, <clears throat> although we searched on personality traits, personality traits is not the template for what we're about to do here. We're actually going to use alignment and deity as our guide because we're actually going to add three fields being liege, title, sorry, clan, liege, and title. So we're going to use alignment and deity as the fields that we want to mimic or copy to, to build our extension. So we're going to get rid of everything else. We've got all of these here files right down to alignment and deity. So we'll drop it down to here. We can del delete all of that text and we'll go alignment, alignment, deity, deity and then traits title. That's the next section, personality traits. Right. So we can get rid of all the content further down below this. Now let's break down and have a look at what we've got here. We've got metal plate. Metal plate is a template. We could search on metal plate, find in files to find out what metal plate is. And if we do that, we'll find that metal plate actually defines this background graphic. We need one of those. So, but we don't want it to be called details title two. What we want is to have a metal plate with our settings in it. We also need a string for clan. We need a string for title and a string for liege. And that they will be across the page here. And then we need some strings. We've got a string for alignment and a string for deity. They're going to be replaced with strings for clan, uh, title, and liege. So I'm going to copy some of that. Those. I'm going to replace these with some code I've just coded up a little earlier. Make it a little bit quicker. So we're going to copy in our new code and we'll just quickly review the code. So we've got a metal plate called clan title. We've got a string called clan. We've got something here, a new entity called title cycler. We'll have a look at what that is shortly. Uh, its name is title. We've got a string u called liege. And now we've got the headings at the top of the page. Label character field top, label character field top, label character field top. So we've got these ones called liege, clan, title. We need to, oh sorry, we've got clan, title, and liege. So if we save this file, we need to now add this file into, we need to tell the extension that we want to load that rule, that we want to include that file. The way we do that is between these base tags, we do an include file, sources campaign, which is a folder, and record car notes, which is our file name. So we want to include that in our rule set. So let's save that. And we will reboot, reload, using our shortcut key, our campaign. And we'll see what changes might have occurred. Now I'm expecting this to give us some errors. Why is it going to give us some errors? It's going to give us some errors because we've told it to use some strings called clan, title, and liege that we haven't actually defined yet. Let's drag 
a shortcut down here to the F5 key so we can remove a few more uh, keystrokes as well each time we do this. Now let's look at the console. This is a, an error log. Um, and when we click on notes, wow, we've got a whole bunch of errors piped up just there. Okay, so we've got um, could not find template title cycler. Uh, we, we discussed that, we mentioned that there's a new um, data type and it's called title cycler. So we're going to have to add that in. And then we'll find that lead is trying to anchor it to title. Title's not specified, so all of these are going to fail. So we need to resolve that first. So we've got could not find template. Let's fix that template up. So over here in our extension folder in the campaigns folder, we're going to create a new file and we're going to call that um, template car.xml. And I'm going to do that, be I'm going to call it that because um, that's the naming syntax that Moon Wizard would use. And what we have to do as well is include this file in our extension. So it's called template underscore car. Save that, but we need to actually put some content in this. So uh, let's open that file up. All right, so this is a button string cycler. So this is another template that's defined somewhere else in the core RPG rule set. But what this is basically doing is it's a button. You click it and it cycles the values around. Now you can see we've got some labels res, which means it's using strings that are going to get replaced by the string values. So we've got one, two, three, four strings are defined here. And the values shaman, war leader, counselor, none. Now these values could also be defined as labels. And we could we could do that. There's an initial value called choose, a default label res resource here as well. So um, we've now defined this template and we can see here our title cycler called title. Everything here is anchoring to title. All right? And because this stuff was all anchoring to title, and title didn't get placed because it didn't know how to place it because it was a it was using a template was that wasn't defined, I think we'll get a much better result when we go back in and we reload our rule set. Let's hit reload. Okay, we can click down here, find Salamander. Click over to the notes tab. Boom. We didn't get any errors in our console log. Now you're going to launch the console here, or if you, but if you get an error, if Fantasy Grounds generates an error from the code, it'll pop up this uh, console window automatically. But I put a shortcut here to load it because I put a lot of debug commands into uh, my Lua scripts when I start coding them. I do it for sanity checks. I do it because I struggle to understand exactly what data I've collected and this by overloading with debug statements I can see exactly what's going on. Anyway, what we can see is we've now got three fields for data here but we're missing the titles that we expected to see there. When we go back to our code we've got a car field top called clan and we've got another one here called title, another one here called liege. What we find is that these are using a text resource called car label clan. Now if we remember our strings 5e file, looks like we're going to need a strings file of our own. So let's go into the folder over here and we'll go back up to here. We'll create a new folder called strings. Again, that's how core RPG and 5e do it. So we'll go into this there, and we're going to create a file called strings underscore 5e. In this case, we're going to uh, call as strings underscore clan. All right, it's all about our clan. Let's open it up and have a look at what's in here. All right, so we've got a string that called car label clan with a value of clan. Another one for title, another one for liege. And then we've got these other ones that are the values for our cycler. Shaman, War Leader, Counselor, None and Choose. So these have all been used elsewhere in our rule set. Okay, let's go back to the extension.xml. Let's include this file as well. All right, don't include it. Even though it's in the folder, it won't get read.
nice and simple. We're now including uh, this logo, we're including a file called record car notes, a template file, template car, and a strings file called strings clan. Let's um, give this another reboot. And once a table is reloaded, pop open our salamander character, and we go down to the notes tab. Boom! We've got clan, title, liege, and we can put some data in them. So we're going to be part of the Eagle Eye clan. And our liege is Zacchaeus. Now we're not going to choose a title just yet. Actually, let's just scroll through them. Shaman, war leader, counselor, nun, choose. Awesome. That's exactly what we wanted to do. Now, why has this appeared at the bottom of the page? Let's quickly explore that. If we go to our notes definition here, so our window class, and we're joining this, so that means that the code in this file is merging basically with the previous content. So that's why, even though we don't have personality, ideals, bonds, etc., in our file, um, they're in the earlier file, and we're merging our changes in. What we'll also find is that the first item in here is the metal plate and it's anchored and it's anchored relative. So what that means is that it's going to appear relative to the previous entry which is the note stuff. And notes was anchored relative to appearance, appearance to flaws etc. So this is nice and simple. Why do we do that instead of defining exactly where it should go? Because some of these fields allow for multiple data lines and that means that if they didn't have room to expand, the, the objects would actually start overlaying each other and become unusable. So we've got clan, title, lead, we've got eagle eye, choose, and Zacchaeus. Perfect. I'm looking for maybe a little bit more from my extension now. Okay, I've, this is awesome. This is exactly what we needed for our campaign, um, where our characters once they attain a certain level, they're given a mission from their liege, and once they complete that mission successfully, they're granted a title, and title of great honour and position within the clan. It might be a war leader, a shaman, or a counsellor. So, our character. I'm going to give it some standard stats. Alright, that looks something like the standard array there, 15, 13, 10, 12, 8, 14, awesome. So, what I'm thinking is that when you become one of these honorifics, you will gain some bonuses in the way of attribute increases, but nothing in life is free, so we'll give you two increases and we'll give you one negative. So your strength and your charisma go up and your wisdom goes down, for example. So a little bit of balance, but it's still a bonus. So what we're going to do now is add, we want a script action to occur. Now where's it going to occur? It's going to occur when we click on the title cycler to advance it through. So that's over here. We're going to add some extra text to that. What are we going to do there? First thing we're going to do is we're going to add a script tag. Now you can see when I do that, Notepad has kindly finished that tag off. It says this is an XML doc, you open a script tag, I'll close it for you. That's fantastic. Now what we're going to do is when do we want this to happen? We want it to happen when we click so we're going to use an on value change. So the value in the field changes. Um, when the value changes, we want certain things to happen. So I'm going to put a debug in here, debug console. All right, and then we're going to put the value that it retrieves back from that. So title cycle active, get value. All right. And I'm going to put a couple of extra lines in here as well that we're going to collect that, that I find I use very often. Um, our actor, you can see already my liberal use 
of debug statements, right? So we've declaring a, a local variable called node win and it's window .get database node. Then we've got another one called r actor and it's actor manager .get actor for of the class type PC window .get database node. We'll go through that all in a sec. So this is our function for the moment. Basically, it's going to write some debug statements. Hopefully, let's reload. All right, straight away we can see that we've got an error. String car sheet notes contents title one end expected near end of file. All right, this is going to throw you a little bit. It's claiming this is on line one. When we embed Lua within an XML file, it can't report back the right line. If we put all our scripts, all our Lua scripts in Lua files separately, it can report the exact error line uh, to help you debug it. But this, for this, we're going to have to go back in and find our error. Now it tells us a little bit script error. It's looking for an end statement. Rookie mistake. Going back to our script here, let's just put an end statement in. Nice and simple. Resave that and we'll reload again. All right, that's a good start. Our console did not throw any errors, so the code is so far good. There's no big errors. Let's watch what happens when we fire up the character sheet. Fire up Salamander, notes. Let's have a look at the console. And still no data being written here, just the statement that reloaded the rule set. Let's click on the cycler though, change it to shaman. And now we see some action in the console. We can see that the title active value is a string called shaman, that node win, the database node is car sheet.id3, and then the actor is type PC, its node is car sheet ID3, and the name is salamander, a string called salamander. Perfect. That's all really useful information. You want to write something to the character sheet that the character has done X, Y, Z, you need to know the character's name. If you want to change a value in the database for a character, you need to know its unique ID. Let's have a quick look at the database and check this, these values out. So I've launched another uh, Windows Explorer window and I'm going into campaigns and I'm going to find our current campaign, 5e demo FGCon. Now our data is all stored in db.xml, but Fantasy Grounds uses, loads the database into memory, keeps it in memory, and just every five minutes writes it back to the file system. So if you ever want to check the data that you've just entered into Fantasy Grounds is actually in the database, you first need to save that file. So right now it's saying 12 a.m. I hit save, and I go back and we look at this file, and it's 12.04. Awesome, so it's the now the current up-to-date version. I open that file up and we can see car sheet ID 1. Okay, you can see car sheet ID 2. You can see I'm just collapsing uh, each of those levels. Now we can see car sheet ID 3. That's where we believe our character is. We're going to scroll down. This charisma is 14. That sounds right. Sounds like the character we created. Wisdom of 8. That looking, looking good. Eagle Eye Clan. Perfect. Scroll down. His name is Salamander. Exactly. Now let's have a quick peek at, we can see here, this value called Liege. Now, we were able to add data into our database. We could just define it on the fly. So we've created this, well, what are we looking at? Liege. Okay. We go back to the record car notes and we find that Liege, um, is a string u called liege. So string u is a data type. Um, liege, it's going to automatically put it into um, this node win value, which is that car sheet uh, dot id 3 in this case. So simply doing this allows us to add new fields into the database straight away. We just define new fields. They're live, they're active. They will get replicated into any character that we build after we've we've done this. So it's really nice and easy, flexible to build things uh, quickly. 
All right. So but the most important thing we wanted to see there was the car sheet ID3, and that's correct. So we can close this file now. We don't need that for the moment. Let's head back into uh, here. Let's rotate this through to War Leader. Consult now says this title cycle active is War Leader. Our database node is still car sheet ID3, and we're still our actor is still Salamander. That's great. That's perfect. But what I'm wanting to do was modify the values of our attributes based on our title. Now this is going to get a little bit funky. All right, you're going to have to uh, trust some of this code as I cut and paste it in in, in the first instance. We'll um, go through it in a tiny little bit of detail. Let's go back to our notes file here. Back here in our script section, and I'm going to grab a chunk of code and move it over. Now this code is another debug statement, fancy that, stats, and it's going to report ability strength score, abilities constitution score, abilities wisdom score, it's going to report all of these. It's also going to set some database values up, current strength, or sorry, some variables up called current strength, current dex, current con, etc. And it's going to use db.getValue, node win, which we've defined up here, which retrieves back the character's ID in the database, and drilling it down a bit further, ability strength score. So it's going to retrieve the value called uh, character, uh, let's have a look. It's going to retrieve the value called car sheet ID3 and then abilities constitution, sorry, abilities strength score. The car sheet ID3 abilities dexterity score. It's going to retrieve all these values, store them in these variable names. Then we're going to do another debug statement and we're going to output those numbers again and we're going to do another one where we're going to just add the total value of those. That's a bit of a sanity check for me, which you'll understand when we add the next code in. Basically, it's going to add up all those values and it'll be a really quick check for me, have the values increased, decreased as we cycle through them. Let's save this. Let's reload our fantasy grounds. Okay, our rules, our table is reloaded. Let's go and check out Salamander, Notes, and we've got Eagle Eye, War Leader, Zacchaeus. Now, when we view our console, there's no extra information here because this has been triggered on change. So, let's change this again to Counselor and view the console. Wow, we've got some extra information here. We've still got the active value, we've still got the database node, we've still got the actor name, but we've got this other one, stats, 15, 13, 10, 12, 8, they were our stats for our character. We stored them in variables and the sum total of those was 72. Awesome. Let's circle through these a couple more and we should see those values. Yep. Okay, we changed it to, to no uh, to, to no title and then we've gone all the way back to shaman but I'm going to cycle it all the way back one more time to choose all right it's back there at choose and let's go check out our code again we're going to add this is where we're actually going to manipulate the data Alright, I've just pasted in a huge chunk of code, and the actual value, the value of the um, code is, is less important. We're not here to learn how to code, we're learning how to find our way through Fantasy Grounds files and how to link things up in Fantasy Grounds. So we've got an if statement here, if get value equals shaman, then let's output some more debug statements, and then let's change this, let's create a variable called new strength, and it's equal to current strength minus one. A new variable called new wisdom, 
which is equal to current wisdom plus one, new charisma, which is equal to current charisma plus one. So here we've got a minus and two pluses, so we've got a net benefit of plus one. And we check out, we've got another debug statement here to the console, blah, 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 all the way through. And we've also got down here, db get value, and we've got some where, here it is, set value, db set value, node win, so pointing it to the car sheet, id3, uh, ability strength score, and we're going to set the new value, same for wisdom, same for charisma. Then we go down with a similar thing for war leader. Now, what we find here is that we actually have to t undo the changes we did in the previous one and add the new ones in. If we become the counselor, then we've got to undo the previous changes again, add the new changes in. If we become none, then we've got to undo the previous changes. We don't have to add anything else in here for none. And the else statement. So to wrap it up nice and neatly, we've got all, the, all these various bits. And then what we've also got in here, in all of these, we've actually got a message text statement. Message text, message text, uh, message text. So we're building up a message file, a message content, and down here with this line com deliver chat message, we're going to deliver a message to the chat window and return true. Let's save these changes. Let's head back to our Fantasy Grounds desktop and reload it. And we can see I've made a mistake and left off another end statement. I've done that before, haven't I? Okay, we need another end statement down here. Call it a rookie error, but you can only claim rookie error so many times and it just it's just a dumb error now. Let's reload one more time. Okay, no error messages loading up here. We still might get some error messages when we load up our character sheet and when we activate the script. Okay, so we're Eagle Eye, Zacchaeus. Let's quickly check our stats here. 15, 13, 10, 12, 8, 14. Let's even just quickly write them down here. All right. Got them there for posterity. Let's head over to notes again. Let's get a promotion. We've retrieved the being given a mission by Zacchaeus to retrieve the sacred sporran, and we've returned it to him. And now his uh, kilt is looking magical again. We be changed to the shaman. All right. We have a bunch of things changed. Our strength changed from 15 to 14. Our wisdom changed from uh, 10 to 9. It seems a little wrong. Like, or actually, it went from 8 to 9. And our charisma went from 14 to 15. But we've still got an error message just here. Attempt to index global message a nil value. Let's go back and check out our code. OK, going through our script file. Looks like we didn't set up the message correctly in the first place. We actually have to define a variable called message to start with. Uh, not that way. Let's try this again. Alright, so we've got local message and we're telling it to use the message font. There's various fonts defined in Core RPG and 5e, but we could define our own fonts as well. But for the moment we're going to stick with this one, message font. So. Let's try that again. Head back in here and hit reload. You'll get the idea that you have to reload your rule set or your extension many, 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 many times. And so using this reload button uh, will save you so much time. Um, Make a small change, test it. Make a small change, test it. Make a small change, still not working. Put debug statements in. Then you'll see why you're making a mistake. Fix your errors up, test it, make another change, rinse, repeat, continue until you end up with the files that you were looking for. Let's go back in here, cycle this through. We're not getting the errors. Let's go back to choose and let's reset our stats back so we can do them 15, 13, 10. They look about right. 15, 13, 10, 12, 8, 14. They're exactly what we want. So let's 
clear the chat and go to the notes log and we are promoted by Zacchaeus not to the shaman okay but we've changed to a shaman we've got new stats this is part of our code was to write to the chat but we've actually been promoted to the counselor so again our cycle we're going through the war leader cycle one more time to counselor and now we've got new stats of 15 12 10 13 9 14 you can see they vary from each of the previous sets what we also might want to do is check in our console log and our stat total um, when we had no title was 72 remember I called this a sanity check I was just trying to do all the math you know, if I add this, take that, add this, take this, re-roll roll back the previous changes, blah, blah, blah. And what I needed to do was confirm that when I start with 72, once, if I started with 72 points in total stat values, once I got a title, I had 73. And I never got more than 73, you know, if I kept cycling through them and I might get a bonus, extra bonus, backwards and forwards, you know, you could just keep cycling through. Sometimes your players will uh, take, you give them one bonus and they will try and sneak away and get an extra bonus and we wanted our code to, to be accurate so when we have a look here so eagle eye the counselor uh, his liege is Zacchaeus the debug data is all correct my chat data is correct my stats are correct I think our extension is done so I'm going to just a, a couple of really quick points I want to refresh and remind you um, keep your file syntax, your folder syntax, your file naming stuff consistent with what Moon Wizard has done. You, your extension may get adopted by someone else and forked or uh, you might abandon it and somebody else takes it over. Uh, your, your data might get pulled into an exist, into a rule set by Moon Wizard um, and if you create everything in the same syntax that everyone else is used to using it just makes it easier for everybody. Put your strings in string files Put your templates in template files. Put your scripts in script files. Uh, make sure you include all your files. Make sure that you set up these hotkeys, reload, console, save. We were working on a character sheet today, so drag the character sheet down here, and you know it saves you a few more clicks. Uh, be generous with all your debug statements. You can go out and comment them out once you've got everything working. Uh, you can also debug to the, instead of debug console, you can go debug chat and that'll write your, your messages to the chat window. And some people prefer to do that. I, I write mine to the console because I tend to leave a lot of the debugs in. Uh, the tools I use, Notepad++ and 7-Zip. I love 7-Zip. Um, it recognizes mod files, pack files, ext files, PPK, ppk files, recognizes them all as actually zip files so I can unpack them straight away. Another thing to remember is that you don't actually have to create, you know, zip this up, rename it, unzip it, unpack it each time you make some changes. You can work from this folder. And the final thing that you need to learn is how to create a shareable extension really easy. We don't go back up here and zip this folder up. We zip up the contents of the folder. Right click here and we use 7-zip and we don't add it to a 7-z compression file. Nobody uses that and certainly Fantasy Grounds doesn't use it. We want to use zip format. So we let it zip to something called fgcondemo.zip and we're going to rename that and we're going to call it fg on demo.ext rename that and that file is now distributable and that file can be loaded onto another person's machine and they will then get the option to load this extent this demo extension in their 5e rule set that's it for this tutorial session and I hope that you gain some insights into how to structure your things. I hope you didn't um, pull out too many hairs when you saw my coding or the inefficient ways I go about things. Um, 
I'm not real good at this, um, but I've learned to do quite a few bits and pieces by looking at other people's examples, by lots of trial and error, and by asking people who know more, more than I do. Hope you get some value out of this. I hope to see some great extensions and tweaks from you guys, and maybe even some new rule sets. Thanks very much.